division. So if I'm going to do this as long division with no calculator, um, this is going to be the dividend. That's a D. This is the divisor. Also, <laughs> the divisor is also known as the denominator, right? All right. And, of course, this is the numerator. All right, so we're just going to go through some long division real quick. I set it up. And I know that you know how to go through the process. It's an algorithm. It's step by step. Step one, step two, step three, right? So first question is, how many times does 8 go into 15? Or actually, that's not the first question. How many times does 8 go into 1? And it does 0 times, so we skip to the next one. 8 goes into 15 once, 1 time, and then what do you do with the 1? You multiply it, right? Don't forget these steps. You say, how many times does it go into it? Now you multiply. So 8 times 1 is 8. Now what do you do? Subtract, subtract it. Don't forget these steps. You subtract it. 15 minus 8 is... Seven, and then you drop down the, where were we, three, right? Uh, when you do division, it's important to be neat, right? I'm getting a little sloppy. I'll try to neaten it up. So that's a three. Now what? Start the process over? Once again, I know you already did this. So this is, how many times is eight going to 73? Nine times. Nine times eight? 72. What do you do? Subtract first. Subtract it, and you get a 1. Then drop down the 2. How many times? Would you please have Lindsay Woods go see officer? So here we go. Um, where were we? 8 goes into 12. How many times? 1 time. 8, 4. I subtracted. I did that too fast. You guys know this process, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to finish this up. Um, bring that down. It's a 4. 5 times 8 is 40. Now, what did you do at this point? Okay, most of you put a decimal here. Oops, a decimal. Come on. Decimal and a zero, and you brought down a zero, right? Now, that's perfectly fine, and that's what I would expect you to do, but I don't want to do it that way because that's not how you first learned how to do this. You first learned how to do this just stopped right now, and you said remainder 4, right? Okay, now what I want to do is I want to take this answer and I want to talk about equivalent forms of that. 1915 remainder 4 is the same thing as 1915 with 4 out of 8 left over. This 4 right here is how many, the 1915 is how many times 8 goes into this evenly, but there were 4 left over when I was trying to make my groups of eight. So four out of eight were left over, right? Now mathematically, I say this out loud as one, nine, one, five, and four eighths. And another way of saying the word and is to use a plus sign. So all of these forms are equivalent. And I know that you already, I know that four over eight is really one half, which is really 0.5. Okay, but these are all equivalent forms. We're going to use this one today. I just wanted to show you why I'm going to use this form because it's the same thing as taking the remainder. So you take your remainder, you put it over the divisor, okay? And if you could reduce, you would, but you put it over the divisor and it's separated to your quotient with a plus, all right? That's old long. So first we recognize that a monomial. If we're dividing by a monomial, in other words, if that is the divisor, like this right here, it is a single term, okay? Well, the, re the way we take care of that is we just break this up into fractions, lots of fractions, and then we simplify. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take 5a squared b over 5ab. I'm going to do each of these individually, and then I'm going to subtract 15 AB to the third over 5AB. And then I'm going to add 10A to the third, B to the fourth, that's a four, over 5AB. Notice what I did. I took the divisor, 
and I split it up evenly with all of those and made three fractions. From there on out, this problem right here, this first one, is a math one problem. This is a math one problem. This is a math one problem. You take this problem and it divides up into three smaller problems. And that's how I'll treat this. So please help me simplify these. Five over five? Okay, it'll be a one, right? Sometimes I need it, sometimes I don't. A squared over A is an A. And B over B goes away. So really just one A, I guess I can get rid of just leave it as an A, right? Minus 15 over 5 is 3. A over A, okay, that's a 1, so it goes away. And B to the third over B is B squared. Good. And then finally, I've got plus 10 over 5, so that's plus 2. A to the third over A is A squared. And B to the fourth over B, B to the third, okay? Are any of these like terms? No, none of these are like terms, so I can't add anything together. There's nothing left to simplify. I am done. All right. This topic up here says division, but I don't see division in this problem. Do you? All right. Right here it is. The negative 1, if you recall, all right, negative 1... This means 1 over 3x squared y. Remember, your negative exponent is 1 over. You put it 1 over. And because this exponent is outside of the parentheses, the entire parentheses gets put on the bottom. Okay? Now is it a division problem? Yes, now it is. Anytime we see this negative 1, we can effectively change the problem to look like this. So now do we recognize it as a division problem? Yes. All right. So I just wanted you to see, sometimes they write it this way. Okay? It's easier to write it this way because I can get it all on one line instead of having to use two lines. So that's why we do that. All right. From here on out, what am I going to do? Divide it up. Divide it up, just like over here. I'm going to divide it into three small pieces. So that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully this will go pretty quick. Let's see, 3x squared y over 3x squared y. That's kind of weird. Plus 6x to the fifth y squared over 3x squared y. Minus 9x. I'm looking at the first, poly the first monomial, that first little division set right here. What's happening with all this? What do you, it, do, it does all cancel, but be careful. What's the answer? It's 1. It's the same exact numerator as denominator, isn't it? 3 over 3 is 1. x squared over x squared is 1. y over y is 1. This entire thing becomes a 1. All right. Uh, the second one, 6 over 3, it's going to be 2. x to the fifth over x squared is x to the third, and then y. And the last one, 9 over 3 is 3. Let's, I'm going to use my laws of exponents and say it out loud. 7 minus 2, right? When you're dividing it, 7 minus 2. That's x to the fifth. And right here, 3 minus 1 is 2, so it's y to the second. Okay. When we have a binomial as a divisor, like x minus 5, then we can't really split it up the way we had it. We're going to have to use a process called long division. There's actually more than one way, but we're going to do long division today. Okay? So we're going to do long division. So remember what goes where on our long division. Inside the house. Okay, x squared minus 2x minus 15. That's the dividend. And the divisor goes outside, that's x minus 5. Now that looks funny, but it's actually exactly the same as that very first problem. I told you pay very close attention to the process, right? Remember what we're trying to do. We On the first problem, this was an 8, and we said how many times will 8 go into 15, I think it was, right? 
well, the 1 and then the 15. How many times does 8 go into 15? So in my head, I'm going to do the same thing. How many times does x go into x squared? This is what's in your head. Don't answer that question out loud yet, because this is what's in your head. How many times will x go into x squared? Notice how I wrote that. How many times will x go into x squared? Simplify this little problem. That gives you x, doesn't it? Well, that's what goes right here. So I'm going to put x. Now, once I know what's up here, what did I always do with that? Remember I said 8 goes into 15 one time. What did I do with this 1? 1 times the 8, right? But this time it's x times x minus 5. So normally that would be a distributive property problem on my paper, but now I'm doing it in my head. So I've got x times x is x squared, and x times negative 5 is negative 5x. So far it's exactly like a long division problem. Now, when we were doing long division, this was an 8. I did 1 times 8 and got 8, and then I did 15 minus 8, right? So I'm supposed to subtract this, and that's what we need to do. And this is the number one place to make a mistake on long division. I'm going to subtract both of those terms. So there are a couple ways to talk about that. I just say it out loud. And I never make a mistake if I say it out loud. But some people like to actually go through and change all these signs. All right? I'm just going to say it out loud on these examples. And then if you're struggling, then we'll switch your method. Okay? What is x squared minus x squared? Zero. That is exactly what I hoped would happen. That was the whole reason we chose those numbers. So that's a zero. What is negative 2 subtract? negative 5x, excuse me, negative 2x minus negative 5x. All right. Remember, in your head, you just said negative 2x minus negative 5x. What is that? That's 3x, right? Positive. Just be careful with your computations. So that's positive 3x. Just be careful with your integers over here. Okay, what would I normally do then? Yeah, I would drag, I love it, drag it down. Drag it down here and make that a negative 15. Once I drag the number down, I repeat the entire process again, don't I? So in my head, I want to know how many times will x go into 3x? Again, this is where I'm looking. How many times will this x go into this 3x? How many times is that? It is three times. And I will take that 3, and it will go right here. What kind of 3 is it, by the way? Positive, so I will put plus 3. Once you know what number goes on top, you take that number and multiply it. So I've got 3 times x and 3 times negative 5. So what is 3 times x? 3x, good, that's what I was hoping would happen. And what is 3 times negative 5? Negative 15. Well, look at there. What do you do with all this? Well, you subtract it, but we're lucky that what happens is 3x minus 3x is 0, just like I hoped. And coincidentally, negative 15 minus negative 15 is also zero, isn't it? All right. Did I use all of my terms? Yes. And I ended up with a remainder of zero. What does that mean, remainder zero? There, I heard a couple good answers there. But when you put all those answers together, you know, you're right. There's nothing left over. That means that the x minus 5 goes into x squared minus 2x minus 15 perfectly, doesn't it? It goes into it x plus 3 times with no remainder left. In other words, x minus 5 is a factor of this. 
And x plus 3 is also a factor of this. How do you check division? Multiply. multiply. Guess what? If you multiplied x minus 5 times x plus 3, what had you better get? You better get x squared minus 2x minus 15. And you can double check that, would you? You would. All right. So, um, actually, that's pretty sloppy. I'm going to rewrite that. x minus 5 and x min uh, plus 3 are factors. Okay? If it goes into it evenly, they're factors. That's an O. All right. Remember, what is this negative 1 right here talking about? All right, that means this, oh, that means this is really all divided by x plus 2, right? But, since I'm going to do long division anyways, I'm going to rewrite it as x plus 2, 4x to the 4th, plus 2x squared minus 4x. Now be ready to erase a little bit in a second because I, I made a mistake here on purpose. But here's our division. Did you notice, by the way, that this problem and the last problem and all the problems we've done are in standard form? Okay. Always start with your highest exponent and then go down in, into by lowering degrees. Okay? So standard form here. All right. So what... Are you thinking in your head? How many times will x go into 4x to the 4th? So if you need to write it down, do it. But how many times will x go into 4x to the 4th? 4x to the 3rd times, right? So you're going to take that, and that's what's going to go right here. So that's 4x to the 3rd times. Now, what do you do with this top number? You've got to multiply it, right, by this, which happens to be a binomial, so we have to do this distributive property in our head. So I've got 4x to the third times x, 4x to the fourth, and I've got 4x to the third times 2, which is what? 8x to the third, right? And then you subtract, so let's subtract. 4x to the 4th minus 4x to the 4th. Okay, that is a 0. That's what I hoped would happen. Now, what's 2x squared minus 8x to the 3rd? Oh, I caught you. I caught you not paying attention. All right, thank you very much. These are not alike, are they? They're not alike. How do I subtract terms that aren't alike? You cannot. Here's where we have a problem. I told you I made a mistake on purpose. This doesn't work for me. I need to leave a space right here where there's an x to the third. So what I'm going to do, this time I'm going to erase, but next time I'm going to remember, and at the very beginning of the problem, I'm going to leave this as a 0x to the third. How do I know? I'll show, okay, good question. Let me finish writing this down. Plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 12. Great question. How do you know that I need to leave that space? Look, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. You've got to have every single one of them. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. You have to have all degrees. Then you would have to have all 12 degrees. Yes, ma'am. Um, no, you just, well, you got to adjust to this, okay? All right. So now I'm ready to keep going. Guys, it's good to make mistakes. That was a good one. We learned from it. So now I've got 0x to the third minus 8x to the third. What is that? Okay, it is negative 8x to the third. I forgot my parentheses there. It is negative 8x to the third. See, it was very important to have that. Now, what do you do with this? Drag it down. Yes. All right. And now what are you thinking in your head? 
How many times will x go into negative 8x to the third? And the answer to that is, how many times does x go into negative 8x to the third? It'll be negative 8x squared times, right? So that goes to my second part. So that's minus 8x squared. And I'm ready to keep going with my division. So I've got negative 8x squared times x. Negative 8x squared times x is negative 8x to the third. I've got negative 8x squared times 2, which is negative 16x squared. And then I subtract. And of course, you just want to be careful with your subtraction. So Make sure. 16. Uh, 16. 8 times 2, 16. So I've got negative 8x to the third minus negative 8x to the third. Okay, becomes a 0. And I've got 2x squared minus negative 16x squared becomes positive 18x squared, and I bring down my negative 4x. And in your head, how many times does x go in to 18x squared? And some of you have definitely figured out this pattern. So I've got 18x here. And that is the third term. And I keep going. It takes a little bit of time. 18x times x is 18x squared. 18x times 2 is 36x. What am I going to do with those? Subtract them. And 18x squared minus 18x squared goes away. Negative 4 x minus 36 is negative 32. No, wait. Yeah, negative. Uh oh. Negative 4x minus 36. It's negative 40, right? Negative 40x. Bring down the 12. And in your head, what are you thinking? How many times does x go into negative 40x? <coughs> Bless you. And the answer to that is, of course, negative 40. That comes up here. It's negative 40. I should be, this should be my last step here, right? Negative 40 times x is negative 40x. And negative 40 times 2 is negative 80. When you subtract and simplify, you get minus all of this stuff. Those go away to zero, just like I wanted them to. And 12 minus negative 80 is positive 92. All right, what do we call that positive 92? All right, that is my remainder, because look, I used the entire polynomial, right? So this is my remainder. So I'm going to take my remainder and I'm going to put it up here as what? As plus 92 over x plus 2. Remember, you put your remainder over the divisor, and that's how you write the last part as a fraction. Yes, sir.